Flesh, Fold, Infinity, by Patricia McCormick. Patriarchal and psychoanalytic discourses have oriented the dissemination and privilege of power which facilitates the dominance of male subjects, not through selection of those particular subjects, but through the systems which structure society and ideology. These abstract systems default to valuing certain masculine qualities and foreclose the possibility of the recognition of true difference by describing alterity only as different from. Deleuze and Guattari see the male subject as the most in need of deconstruction in order to facilitate the mobilization of ethics. Luce Irigare describes the masculine structuration of society as phallologocentric, where knowledge and power are oriented around such qualities inherent in masculinity. In this article, I will offer another model which negotiates the traditional antagonism between these two theoretical suggestions. Using Deleuze's work of The Fold, I will posit Becoming vulva. Becoming vulva is necessarily experimental, and thus this article will attempt to offer entrance points into other forms of becoming without demanding a prescriptive technique. In other words, she has no idea how to give herself or another woman an orgasm. You just kind of do everything you can. The sly is the limit. Anatomically defined, the vulva is the visible external female genitalia. By external, what is meant is all that isn't within the pelvis, so the vaginal aperture is included. Divergent from psychoanalysis and classical sculpture, external female vulva is visible only through exploration. It is two sets of lips clitoris, vagina, anus, g-spot, and apocryphal elements. It is the spreading out and convergence of labia. It is the unity of the clitoris and its concealment of the urethra, a single organ as palimpsest. The vaginal aperture is a volitional hole, both penetrable and ingurgitant. The indiscernibility between what constitutes the vulva, not the thigh, not the belly, and what constitutes the surrounds, not vulva, and the internal aspect of the vulva, which reflects the infinite potential found in the exploration of all internality. The vulva is informal both as a non-reified biological form and as a mode of expression. Vulvas are materially formed of multiple folds of flesh. The body becoming vulva is involuted and undone, creating what Deleuze in Difference and Repetition calls a larval larval sexual sexuality. I made that one up. Becoming vulva in fleshes as fold, every part of the flesh, every nerve, every tissue mass, every artery, every organ, the unfolded skin as libidinally provocative. In the event of thinking over knowing, vulva is present but not present to itself, sensed but not perceived and known, skin may be peeled, planes touched, parts intensified or moved around corporeal minutiae explored and every plane of the body reorganized into a new configuration with new function and meaning. Becoming vulva makes skin flesh of the world, not the self upon a becoming. Becoming vulva is, put simply, entering into an alliance with the fold flesh and force of the indeterminacy of this desiring, disorganizing organ. It is difficult to conceptualize a vulva in the same way as one can conceive of a penis. 
One can, however, have vulvic male genitalia. The use of the word cunt, as opposed to vulva, comes as a response to cunt being the limits of linguistic profanity in Western culture, where the actual signifier of non-specific female genitalia is exchanged for the signifier of a repulsive or offensive or more resonant in its affinity with women disorderly or disobedient subject, particularly male. Essentially, men most often call call other men cunts, pussies, or girls when they fail to fulfill an expectation. The transference from philologically smooth vulva to the hard consonants of cunt converts the speaking of the word itself from the open vowel teeth vulva to tongue vulva to the guttural and teeth to teeth. Cunt. Cunt. In order to touch himself, man needs an instrument. His hand, a woman's body, language. And this self-caressing requires at least a minimum of activity. As for woman, she touches herself without any need for mediation. And before there is any way to distinguish activity from passivity, woman touches herself all the time, and moreover no one can forbid her to do so, for her genitals are formed of two lips in continuous contact. Hold on, by that logic a man is touching himself every time his uh, junk like thwacks against his thighs, like when he's doing a marathon, or lifting heavy objects from the floor onto the couch. No one can stop him doing that either. Becoming vulva. While taking its cue from Irigare's model of the two lips, <laughs> concerns itself more with temporality and its focus on mobilization and in reference to space, to perspectival apprehension. The vulva is made of the fold of two lips, <laughs> and with every move, the relation and orientation alter. Kind of like this paper is a way to continually touch yourself with a pen. Deleuze's fold extends and proliferates the potential futures of the lips. Is this an investment strategy? Strata in the fold is fold structure without hierarchy, or the geoatrophy constituted by history. Beyond, but not better than, Irigere's two lips, this aperture attacks the very site of paradigmatic oppression. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Because it I don't think one part of this is any more important than another part of it, because it's all fluid and vulvic, it's just a bunch of foldings of fleshy words. So we'll just skip ahead. Why not? Becoming vulva interrogates phallologocentrism as a structure beyond identity with which all subjects participate. This has a twofold effect. It recognizes that participation, rather than position, in the structure is where reification and revolution is enacted, and it shows the imperative availability of feminist structures for male subjects. Thus, revolt comes from all directions, not simply from those which are directly served by shifts in the structure. Mm. Skip ahead. The tactical selection over the subject thing woman for the paradigmatic vulva makes a voluminous rather than absent or male-defined space, a feminist space that is imperative for all sexes to participate with and which can allow all subjects to have similar intensive aspects of political unity without themselves being the same. Becoming vulva emphasizes the movement of the two lips 
as our folding with them and our fold planes forming connections, which we cannot see, but which affect the singularity nonetheless, as we perceive relations with elements of other planes that do not perceive themselves but affect to infinity in relation to the fold unfold foldings of becoming vulva is the fold itself as a fluid inflection what irigere has called blurring or mucosal this resists the risk in creating yet another binary from the mechanics of fluid versus solid Mucosal describes the fluids emergent of and from the vulva, which connects the vulva's folds with itself and blurs demarcations of externality. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. The vulva's borderline sexual organ undifferentiated pleasure fold requires the affected connected to enter into alliance to be infected by the vulva's molecular possibilities of sexual acts and pleasures and signification and semiosis as acts of pleasure in power. The whole desiring body must be more than one and folded to enter into alliance with the vulva, a sorcerer body. Otherwise, the vulva is reduced to the little penis clitoris and the absent penis sheath. Mucosal describes the fluids emergent of and from the vulva, which connects the vulva's folds with itself and blurs demarcations of externality. While irgere claims sperm has been associated with a form of object, but because it is within spermal fluid threatens to crumble the penis. Hmm. Crumbling creates a becoming vulva of the penis because the penis does not disappear, only dissipates as a unity. Becoming vulva is splaying of self. Becoming indeterminate, polymcest, the open and pure intensity of being a visceral, vicious, and shuddering signification, stuttering, silence, folded, present but invisible, visible but not knowable, catalyzing a structure and series of pleasure planes beyond and in excess of the phallus. The self, the vulva, and the world are labyrinthine thresholds, and their infinity relies only on our exploration. Again, this is a reading from Becoming Vulva, Flesh, Fold, Infinity by Patricia McCormick. Good night.